All right, Stuart. Spring is here, officially. We got a new little Craigslist pizza oven, which I'm quite excited about. Are you excited about it? Yeah, we've been using okay. it quite a lot. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna use it today for a really cool recipe. Really cool. Really cool. All right, but the problem is that anywhere we have gets a little dumpy every once in a while, doesn't it? Yeah, our outdoor eating area needs a little facelift. Yeah. And it's one of those spaces that we're constantly reassessing how it needs to be set up. Yeah. So today I'm gonna to move some things around, okay. clean some things up, and get ready for cooking some dinner outside. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna to try to give you full reign. Cause this is our outdoor kitchen. We both cook out here, but this is, this is slightly more your domain. Yeah, and I have a vision for, I think, how I want things to be. This will be probably not its final resting place uh, for things. Is it ever? It'll probably still move around a little bit. But, okay. you know, as most things, you gotta kinda take the long view and sure. be willing to maybe say, hey, this is how it's gonna be this year, but I have a bigger project in mind for down the road. All right, Stu's gonna keep going outside for a while. I'm gonna come in because even though the project's not done, I'm already thinking about what we're going to eat out there and what's for supper. I'd like to thank Porter Road for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to tear into this. So you guys know that here on our homestead, we raise a lot of the meat that we eat, but even still there are cuts of meat that we can't get. We don't have a good butcher here. We don't always have the sources of meat that we need, nor can we get the cuts that we want. I feel extremely grateful that there are companies out there like Porter Road raising meat in the right way. They'll ship it to your doorstep and it is so delicious. Porter Road works with trusted local farmers who raise animals the right way, humanely on pasture with no added hormones or antibiotics. You can shop a large selection of dry aged beef, pork and chicken, including rare butcher cuts like the Denver steak we're cooking together today. Every single thing I've eaten from Porter Road, and I've eaten a lot, has been absolutely delicious. You can visit the link right below the video to get 15% off your first order with Porter Road. So I, th I think I got it on camera that you said I could, you would leave the arrangement of things in my hands. Did I? Yeah. We'll, we'll go back and we'll check, we'll check the recording. I don't remember that. If you guys wonder why things get so messy here, this is a perfect example. This is um, a jar that Owen found downstairs that he decided to mix with all sorts of nasties. It's just been fermenting. It's fermenting now out in the sun, he says. So I guess we'll set that aside. <laughs> Maybe we'll have some as a cocktail. Sludge soup. Later. <laughs> I have to tell you guys this story. I've told you this before, but through college I tasted a lot of beef because I went to college for beef production where we would have amazing classes and we would just eat beef and we would go to Cattlemen's Association's meeting and the Washington Beef Council and all these great things. And I got to eat a lot of good meat. I have never until recently heard of the Denver steak. And turns out, I thought I would just wasn't paying attention in school, which that's possible. But from what we've researched, this was just discovered in 2008. So we ordered one, we got it, we cooked it, and like we, our jaws just hit the floor. Delicious. It was the best steak I have ever had. And I feel like this is the perfect meat to christen the outdoor area with. Like we're back into outdoor cooking season, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's We're gonna time. be outside just cooking our faces off all summer. And Porter Road does such an exceptional job. They're just incredible, dry aged, so beautiful. So I'm gonna keep preparation dead simple. We've been having fun lately, not only discovering new cuts of meat, but we cooked our bread over the fire for the first time. That was a like lot of fun. proper bread. Yep, I'm gonna do it again tonight. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it was the perfect recipe too, the ciabatta recipe. Yeah. That's the perfect recipe for over the fire or in the pizza oven. In the pizza oven. Yeah. So last year we made a ciabatta recipe. I'll link it below the video. You can check it out. We make it all the time. We always bake them in our oven and they're 
fantastic. But this time we had the pizza oven and we thought, we'll just stick them in there and see what happens. And it was so good. Really good. <laughs> I love flaked salt on my steaks. Kind of gets a nice little crust. By the way, here's a little cooking tip for you. Try to get your steaks to room temperature before you put them on the grill. Salt them, season them, let them hang out in your kitchen for a while. I'm gonna go outside and set the table and finish up some work out there while these sit and season. All right, I don't wanna season these a ton, but I am gonna add just a little bit of kind of like a general garlic seasoning. It's got garlic and parsley and a little bit of maple sugar in it. Just a little something something because we're going super basic tonight. I'm gonna see what I can forage out of the garden <laughs> for greens. We're going to cook some ciabatta in the bread oven and then we're going to cook these gorgeous Denver steaks. I'm just so excited to eat these again. I think it's been two weeks since I had it and I'm very enthusiastic. This is just food at its best, at its simplest and at its best. All right, should we go finish outside? Okay. All right. So this is a red veined sorrel. It has such a beautiful flavor and it's a perennial green. So it'll just come back year after year. Isn't it beautiful? It is. You wouldn't even know it's here either. It's just kind of tucked, tucked amongst away. the, tucked amongst the mint here. It has such beautiful leaves and it comes along before the spinach. I'm going to show you another one. There are people who love cilantro and then people who love cilantro. <laughs> this is just a fraction of what we will grow this year. Next to parsley, it is my very favorite herb in the entire world. And not a lot of people eat it like this, but I will just mince it up with a nice little like soft vinaigrette and we'll just eat it as a salad because it's so good. And out of the garden, it's so fresh. So here's my tip for cilantro. When you're sowing it, meaning when you're planting the seed, clear an area and just dump in a ton of seeds and then cover them because each of these is pretty much a seed. Not quite, but close to. So you need to sow a lot of seeds. It's not the type of thing that you sow one or two seeds of and then it grows into a big plant like basil. It doesn't work like that. Um, so plant a lot, just plant more. It's so good. What is it, buddy? This is the Mac Daddy. Do kids still say that these days? <laughs> I don't think so. No? No, I don't think so. I haven't heard it huh. really from anybody but you. Wasn't it Criss Cross that said Mac Daddy? <laughs> it was a thing. Okay. It was what the cool kids said. Yeah, I believe it. This is the best herb in the entire world. It's going to be a good salad. There's a lot going on in the springtime that demands our attention. There's so much work to be done in the gardens, and there's so much left to finish when it comes to school. Our days are very full. And after a full day, it can seem a little too much to put the extra effort in to supper time, especially when that involves actually setting the table and bringing out beautiful plates and putting flowers out on the table, it can feel a bit much. But here's the reality. Every single time we put extra effort into creating these moments, our work is rewarded sevenfold. These are the meals where we end up lingering around the table and telling stories, where the kids will venture out and take part in the cooking process. Everyone's not spread to their corner of the home. Somehow it brings us all into this moment together. Regardless of what's on the table, regardless of what season you find yourself in, let this be an encouragement to you 
because none of these moments just happen. All of them, from the food, to setting your place, to creating your outdoor kitchen, all of it requires so much effort. But that effort is worth it because these are the moments we're creating, whether it's with our friends, our neighbors, our children, our extended family, all of these are beautiful opportunities for us to just take a deep breath, maybe unplug from the world for a moment and do the most fundamental human thing that we can do, which is to break bread together and to enjoy fellowship. So tell stories, cook delicious food, create a beautiful space for yourself to do that in. That doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. And that doesn't mean that it's even going to be permanent. Eating, enjoying the season and enjoying grilling together. I cannot wait for this season ahead where this gets to be something that we do all the time. Somehow, magically, food tastes better outside, and it certainly tastes better with people that we love. Mm-hmm.